Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Prophet. This is Kyle and Drew with your sneak peek. At next week, we're going to talk about comics coming out August, what is it, 24th, 2017. Drew, this is episode number 393. Before you and I get into what's coming out August 23rd, I screwed that up. What's going on in the world of comic? It's been a little while. We, I missed last week, but I am back, and we got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, we had um, we had a, a, a Jason-centric episode. He did some interview for us with um, uh, a shop owner out there, uh, an online an online retailer out there, and um, uh, was really good, well received. Uh, folks like that. I I muddled through and got through a sneak peek. Without you, don't like Aww. doing those solos, man. They're tough. Yeah, yeah. You, they're tough. Long winded. You listen to yourself and all the pregnant pauses. It's tough. Yeah, you have really got to be uh, on your game to get get through that without a lot of a lot of dead air. Mm-hmm. So um, glad you're back for however long it is. No, until you, I'm until good. You go until on another walkabout. I'm good until the end of October. We gravy. Oh, wow. Well, there's no September. Travel? Oh, kids are back in school. Kids are back in school, oh, so I am gotcha. handcuffed. I gotcha. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Well, you did. You you uh, sucked the marrow out of life this summer, dude. You really <laughs> made it. If there was a weekend, we uh, we did something. Pretty sweet. So, what is happening? What are we doing first? Uh, we well, got there's some all hot kinds books. of fun. Yeah, yeah. We're, I was excited to see. Uh, we talked about on the first time we kind of did a, a pseudo preview spotlight when we flipped it through the previews. We talked about uh, the Weapon H, the Hulk hybrid of uh, Hulk Wolverine hybrid, uh, coming out in Totally Awesome Hulk 22. And by golly, it did not disappoint. It hit just as hard as we thought to, and is already a $15 book. Nice. You and I had speculated a bit about, um, what is it, Mr. Miracle? Now, when we talked about it, did I actually order them? I don't, I don't believe so, but you talked <laughs> about the, a lot, a lot you, you made it sound more interesting than I even ever thought. It was not on my radar at all. And you, then you pulled the trigger on them, and then I may have slept on them. It's possible. Oh, uh, and now they're fifteen dollar books. Yes, another one that's a, a, a great uh, flip right there. Uh, what did I do? What's wrong with me? <laughs> uh, let's see here. We we pulled the trigger on our Supergirl twelve Bs, and now we've got the art for Supergirl thirteen Bs coming out next month or here uh, soon. So that's cool. Uh, what else hit hard? There's a lot of news on the uh, Dark Knight medals that were out recently. Um, Dark Knight metal, yeah, between 25 and 50 percent are being reported as damaged. So we talked about Dark Knight metal selling through and going to a second print, but a lot of that appears is because everybody across the board got damaged. And some of the talk online is some of these specialty prints like Aspen Comics and stuff who did these, uh, you know, 3,000 for the first one, 1,500, 700. Heck, half of those got damaged. So those are even more desirable because the print runs are even lower because so much of these uh, got screwed up in in printing and shipping. So just something to think about there that uh, on all this Dark Knight's Metal stuff. So if there is a nine eight out there, it's even more valuable. It's, yeah, it's right. it's by far more pristine because oh, yeah. And cool. when you look at the, the the numbers for the print runs of them, half of those got sent back if their covers A's and they're not printing any more of the, the the cover A's. So it's going to be hard to find out what an actual print run is for that that's alive and well. Now I wonder what the folks at dcbs will do if they send me a damaged metal and i want to i want to i want to return it uh they will more than likely credit you back and say we'll see about a second print hmm Hmm. did we get that metal yet i don't believe so yeah dark knights the let's see the casting was on the last order so yeah, the, metal was metal was just this week. So yeah, metal was just just happened. So we don't have, we don't have it yet. Correct. Okay. And then uh, Mr. Miracle 
was uber hot as well, but um, yeah, it's you. I think the hotness is in the cover A, cover B, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's, it's not just the cover A. The cover A's aren't that. I mean, they're what double, triple cover, but um, it's the cover B that's a little more rare. Is that true? Yeah, it seems that it's it's a shorter print run. And I assumed uh, it'd be a great read as it is, and uh, but did not have it. Did not think it would have any spec value, mm-hmm. a la the vision. Um, so I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong again. You'll have that. Yeah. Uh, I guess from what I'm hearing, uh, this last long overdue Southern Bastards was. Uh, months, you know, months, months. We we talked about how how long the delay was, and there, mm-hmm. Jason Latour was his dad died, and he's had all kinds of issues, and um, so they had this issue, and now they're taking another hiatus. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure how long until it comes back, but doggone it. Uh, at least we got one, I guess. Mm-hmm. We should just be thankful for that. Yeah, it's kind of like a, just a bonus. But yeah, if if it if I mean if it, Jason Aaron can't really write things because he's on fifty six books, I think for Marvel. <laughs> you think so, that's it? Yeah, that's what it is. Now, um, Michael Lamb was telling us that after this. Uh, what was the Kirkman the Skybound imprint that sold? Yeah, Skybound is what. It was. Yeah, Kirkman Correct. sold Skybound, and uh, is that to Netflix? To Netflix, yep. To Netflix, and it said now it looks like Kirkman and AMC are having uh, lawsuit clashes over uh, profits from Walking Dead. Ooh, um, and that could be a billion dollar lawsuit because of the the kind of money we're talking. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know Frank Darabont had see, sued AMC earlier when he got ran, run off the show. Yeah. Uh, did he do pro- just episode one, or did he do season one? Season one. Season one. That's right. Season one. That. Some would say the best season. Some would. Um, and so I, I'm worried. I'm worried that the end is near for. A split from either Walking Dead and AMC or Kirkman and AMC and and do we want Walking Dead without Kirkman involved? No, 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 no. We don't. We want Kirkman involved. Could they still m- follow the comic series if they split? They're going to cut this off it's, it's some, here soon anyways. They're going to come to a sort of end here in the next couple of years. There's no way they can drag this out too much longer. <clears throat> you don't think they can do the time jump? Or not do the time jump? And I, I spin... don't think you can hold on to actors for a decade anymore. Can they... Can they... Can they not do the time jump and spend time exploring that stuff that we didn't get to see in the comics? Yeah, they could absolutely friggin' lutely do that. But the time jump was so much fun. Yeah, time jump jumps <laughs> great. Introduces new characters, kind of redoes all of the settings and the different towns. Yeah, yeah. It's, we it's, and it's we legit. get the we get the. Uh, it, yeah. And it would really help with the fact that uh, the actor playing Carl is older. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, because he's doing some grown up stuff now. Yeah, in the comics. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, this sucks. And, you know, you think it's not a smart move because this is uh, Netflix has bought up Millar World and now Skybound. No, I think and, Amazon bought one of them. Oh, did Amazon buy Millar World? No, I think Amazon bought Skybound. Oh, they did. did oh, that's right. Okay. I think gotcha. Netflix, gotcha. Netflix and Millar World, uh, Amazon and Skybound. So that sounds right. Yeah, you know, Hulu will probably buy uh, Giant Generator Rick Remender's imprint. <laughs> I mean, these uh, a lot of these places are starting to grab as many of these uh, these kind of outlier IPs as they can because Disney announced that 
by 2018, it's removing all of its content for the most part from Netflix and starting its own streaming service, which means Marvel, Disney, Star Wars will all jump ship from these. We don't know the level, you know, as for our Defenders series and the things that were created in conjunction with Netflix, what what the deal is of the ownership there. But that's a huh. lot of different IPs that are not going to be available for uh, Amazons and the Netflixes and Amazons of the world. Yeah. So I think it's a smart <clears throat> buy for them to look to kind of outlier comic content with familiarity. Yeah. Now, and, yeah, you're uh, a cord cutter, right? I am definitely a cord cutter. I, no. I pay for both a, a Netflix and a uh, Amazon. Amazon. Now, so you, it, eventually it's quite possible. And I have access to an HBO login. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you, so you've got HBO Go. Mm-hmm. And you've got Netflix. You've got, you don't have Hulu yet. Correct. I don't do Hulu at all. But you might be doing Disney. More than likely, yes. I mean, my, chil- my children are Netflix children who who uh, that's yeah. how that's how they consume everything. Yeah, so yeah, you might have <laughs> you might have enough monthly service fees that you're back up to what cable was. We're still talking thirty bucks, whereas cable I couldn't get below eighty five or satellite, I should say. Yeah. Eh, okay. Okay, that's not bad. Mm-mm. I know yeah. cord cu- I know cord cutters that spend sixty five seventy five dollars a month. I've not gotten there yet. Thankfully, video games and comic books satiate me. Yeah. Now, did you read Dark Knight Metal? Yep. Now, should we talk about the end and what's that's meant for kind of an old book skyrocketing a bit? With the 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 three people that it showed at the end. Yeah. Essentially, well, the three essentially characters. Just- the spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert sandman so uh sandman 22 seems to be the issue that's uh being ran after there's also some talk of sandman 69 and things like this because he was apparently born in one of these issues and then becomes the current person in another one i'm still trying to figure that out i didn't out, pick it up i didn't pick up what you put what you're putting down Okay, so uh, we see, at the end, we see Sandman, who I'm not real familiar with, the guy at the very end. The Vertigo Sandman? Uh, the Dreams of the Angels, no, not not Vertigo. So this is this is an actual DC character, Like the Okay, so like the Kirby Sandman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know anything about him. Yeah. So what are they chasing after? Uh, people are talking about Sandman 22. He's born, but he doesn't become Dream until issue 69 or 70 of Sandman. You sure those aren't Vertigo, the Vertigo Sandman series? It sounds like it sounds like. Is it? Okay. I'm not completely yeah. sure because, like I said, I'm not. That's not something I've ever really read. I just know I've read a couple articles on there being movement. Hmm. Let me make a quick look real quick. Cause nice. I know that's what everybody's trying to jump at now. Is, well, hmm. Sandman 22 is probably in a thousand bargain bins right now. Yeah, exactly. Now, the what if you said the last one, you say 70 or 72? 69 or 70, yeah. Yeah, so the stuff at the end of the run, not as prevalent. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, you're seeing things like Sandman 22, first appearance of Daniel and Maze. Daniel and Mays. God, I don't even... Uh, it's been so long since I've read that. It doesn't even sound familiar. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, this does look like Vertigo Run. So, okay, I was way off. Well, there is there is a, there is a like a Kirby okay. Sandman from... Yeah, like, and a long Sandman time 69 is the first appearance of Daniel Hall as Dream. Okay. So, and that's... That's, that's who was in the end of... The metal. Metal. I didn't yes. even pick the, I didn't even pick up on that. Yeah. So those have gone up from dollar bin books to thirty dollar books and such. Huh. Let me check completed listings on. I'm looking at, at Sandman sixty nine right now. Um, we're seeing some cheap. Some go for a couple bucks. We're seeing them go for twenty bucks. Uh, someone did a uh, Obes offer for just less than eighteen. Seeing somebody paid thirty six for it the other day. So, yeah, those have. Should those I break up my run? Moving. Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> you can't get anything one. out of it anywhere else. I didn't. I, I 
I, I never finished my run, so I'm still missing like four four comics out of it. So just go ahead and sell twenty two. Yeah, sixty nine. <laughs> I could do that. Yeah, it looks like sixty nine's got good movement. I don't, I don't know if seventy does, but yeah, people are saying that issue sixty nine is the first appearance of Daniel Hall as Dream. Yeah, those. Um, yeah, those. I know exactly where I'm heading. <laughs> next week to find some of those because I, I know I know they're sitting in a couple of bins mm-hmm. yeah you're seeing a lot of people online get good deals for them though sniping uh, stuff that was stagnant for a while um, but you're seeing some good sales for like if you got a good copy of 69 it's moving good and then if you get got a good copy of what did I say 22 yeah it's it's doing fair, pretty well too because that's yeah. the f- that's Daniel's apparently birth or first appearance or whatever. Yeah, you, yeah. you're seeing a lot of people getting twenty or forty for those. If it's a good condition book. Dang. Yeah. Um. Okay. Somebody got sixty five bucks out of one. What the hell? Yeah. I need to go leave right now and go look for dollar yeah. bin stuff. Jeez. Yeah. So yeah, that's just something that uh because. Again, this is just like, oh, character pops in, in what we're doing with this dark multiverse stuff with Batman. You know, things are popping. And we, you know, I say spoiler, but we don't get much from him at the very end. We just see him. And he says a couple things. I, I, I don't even remember that. I, I tell you, it started off really good with that, like, Voltron battle going on. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. And then I, I was just like, I got bored. So, yeah. um yeah maybe it was just uh it's just me <laughs> sounds like i missed i missed a couple of key points <laughs> uh that happens when you read as many books as we sometimes do you don't have any room to reread or an- hyper analyze yeah hey you know what we didn't get a hyper analyze while you were gone is the sales for july ah uh, yes so we should check those out because I would have got them perfect. Yeah, I would have I'd like to. Let, let's go ahead and say you would have said that there were four books over a hundred thousand. That's exactly what I was saying. And the top book would sell oh one hundred twenty-eight thousand. That sounds like what I would have told you exactly. And you got it right. Ding ding ding. So, <laughs> winner winner chicken dinner. <laughs> so yeah, um, the top book is Dark Days: The Casting. It is. Um, it sold one hundred and twenty-eight thousand copies. It's a four ninety-nine book from DEC. Astonishing X Men from Marvel, also a forty-nine four ninety-nine book, came in at rank two, but number one in dollars um, because it must not have been discounted as much, I guess. And ah. then it sold one hundred and twenty-two thousand uh, copies. Pretty good. Um, and then we got a couple of Batman's. Uh, 26 and 27 and just like I said it rebounded from its it sub, sub 100 if you and got a good storyline it turns out people uh, are fans of good writing storyline yeah so the days of riddles and jokers and stuff like that is doing really well <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever it's called but I am a little concerned because 27 20, although 26 is at 107,000 27 is down to 102 so probably twenty eight is gonna fall back down again. Yeah. And we need we'll need something else exciting to pop it back up. Absolutely. Then we've got uh, rank five and six. We've got two secret empires, six and seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, sold eighty five thousand and eighty one thousand. Um, yeah, not a ton of drop off in there. Holding steady. Holding steady. Marching towards the end. Good story. I'm enjoying it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Star Wars. Uh, thirty three picking up a few readers. It actually went up in numbers from thirty two the prior month. That's good, isn't it? I wonder yeah, that's why. awesome. Yeah. Do we know why? Ah, uh, no. Just just the strength of the book, I guess. Mm-hmm. So it sold sold almost seventy five thousand. That's pretty good. We got a weird Deadpool kills Marvel Universe again at rank eight, uh, and it sold seventy four thousand copies. Must not have been discounted at all because it is the fourth uh, ranked uh, sales book, which is interesting. Hmm. I guess because those Batman slid down on and were uh, were only two ninety nine books, 
And the Secret Empires probably had deeper discounts because they're event books. That's gotcha. my guess. Okay. That's just my guess. Uh, let's see. Walking Dead comes in at rank 9 and sold 67,000, almost 68,000 copies. Yeah, and that one is down almost 20%. Or uh, it looks like it's down 15,000 books from 168. Now, I'm not sure we had the uh, the Pride covers for 168. I don't know if that would uh, account for the hundred for the 15,000 books. I don't know. It's interesting. I wonder why it is. It's a big drop-off, isn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, we had a spike. This is back down to around where I think it normally sits. I, I just I don't know if I can attribute that whole uh, thing to to homage covers or not homage but uh, pride covers. Yeah, because I kind of thought that it was at, in the seventies now regularly, yeah, there is, but I guess the, not. There is no B cover or anything for uh, one sixty nine that we're talking about. Here. Okay, well then that so that does explain it. Okay. And I think we have a a cover for one seventy or one seventy one, right? coming yes Can't remember yeah, yeah yes 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 yeah can't remember which one it is yeah. um ugly cover but who cares is it the hickman cover i think whatever that one was yeah yeah that's not great uh rank 10 rounding out rank 10 is spider-man 2 spider-men 2 uh number one and it's at sixty-seven thousand. so uh, that debuted in the top 10 which is good We'll take Always it. a good thing. Always a good thing. Um, as we scroll down through the rest of the top, what anything stick out at you that you'd like to talk about? Uh, let's see here. I like it when Detective and Detective are in Flash and Flash and Justice League and Justice League, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. They're right beside each other. No big gaps and draws within the month. It's good. Yeah. I still don't understand what the attrition is um, between from 26 to 27. Mm -hmm. um, it must be retailers. Yeah. They just... have a legitimate calculation, and they go by that in yeah. every way, shape, and form. Now, All-Star Batman being that low, is that an issue? Because, you you know, All-Star Batman's a fun kind of mainline title, but it's, you know, down to 60,000. It's going to be below 60,000. It's going to be in the 50s next month. I dropped it. Yeah, a lot of people Are have. you Are you reading it? No. Well, there you go. See? Anecdotally, but, there's... 100 percent of comics you've got profit big expensive cre creators on that yeah yeah um but he's also doing dark knight metal and yeah what what's he paying attention to very true i think it's the five dollar price point is this the you think this is the last all-star batman or yeah i think it's going to fade out and be done was it, of course, was it last, supposed to be a 12 The last title we, we accused of going to be canceled soon didn't go well. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I do it. I seem to do it all the time. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a wonderful way for this book to end. And it, then it's out next month. <laughs> yeah. We talked about Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe being in number eight. And then we have the second issue coming out the same month at number 31. Wow. Uh, dro dropping only 42%, which is... A better drop rate than the normal Marvel titles from one to two, and again, it's about ten places above in the sales revenue. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I guess I wonder if that has, is all to do with the DC two ninety nine books. Yeah, I'm not sure. We have Edge of Venomverse with a second issue out, dropping forty eight and a half, almost fifty percent from one to two, and actually. Would you care to speculate on? We had Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man number one as our as our number one book last month. Right. Number two is at rank seventeen with only fifty four thousand books. It dropped one hundred and seventy seven thousand, or seventy six percent. Pretty solid. <laughs> <laughs> that well, is a chunk. Now, it's well, don't we good. Expect... I wonder if it's going to rebound in that number two you need to have because it's going to be by far the dynamic low print. Don't we expect book. Peter Parker to spell, to sell below Amazing? And Amazing is at 56000 so uh -huh. it should even be lower than that. But it's a better book than Amazing. <laughs> Not anymore. It's it picked up. Amazing's yeah. picked up. 
Yeah. He's been laying the seeds. He's been listening to Kyle and Drew. Uh, I th- we, we think it looks to me like, uh, spoiler alert, um, if you haven't read the recent one, but um, Parker went through and uh, kind of EMP'd his, all his intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Parker, Parker Industries kind of destroyed itself. So there will be no P- Parker Industries next month. And that means uh, he's broke. Woohoo! Which is how we like him. Yeah, no doubt. Now, hopefully, he doesn't start another tech company. We don't want that. We do not want that. Saga at rank thirty-two. How are only forty-two thousand people reading this book? I don't understand it. I don't know they're trade it's... waiters. We know the answer. I'm still angry. Yeah, it, they're trade waiters. It 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 sells amazing in trade. So. Mm-hmm. And digitally sells well. Yeah. Super Suns down to 35,000s right there beside my Night Wings. The other, the third of the Super, the Spider Man books, the Miles Morales Spider Man, um, took a tail up this one to uh, 33,000 from its 29, the previous one. So actually, it uh, uh, kind of went up a little bit. That's good to see. That is good to see. I like that. Yeah. Shoot, I was looking for something, and now I can't remember what the heck I was looking for. Good old champions. Selling 27,000 copies all the way down at rank 79. Oh, that's what I wanted to look at. Okay, if we see Totally Awesome Hulk here at rank 96, it's 20, It you know, issue number 21. And, of course, the hot book is issue 22. Now, I, they had people like me jump on and grab a couple because of this first appearance. Yeah, this month, issue 21 was 22,939. How many prints do you think we'll have for 22? Will it be? To, will it still be under 50,000? Well, I don't think anybody... Well, yeah, you're right. I, you think it's we gonna... all knew it was, it was on the cover. It was solicited as, ha <laughs> look at this guy. You're going to leap. You think it's going to double to 50,000? I, I don't think it will, but no. that was my question to you. No, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. So if, let's say, this goes to 40,000, you know, you're good. gaining quite a bit, That's still a, there's still not a lot of them out there. Even at 15 bucks, it's worth trying to grab one so you're not left out in the cold for a character that a giant Wolverine Hulk hybrid, I can see Marvel just running this character into the ground for the next couple of years. Um, I wouldn't buy it. Okay, that's my uh, question. Fifteen to you. bucks? No, I wouldn't okay. buy it. Ten bucks? No. Okay, just checking. No, I don't trust. Just I don't check. trust Marvel new characters. They don't. No. Okay. I mean, who was the last one that broke big? Um, Spider Gwen. All right. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Motor Girl from Abstract Studios, 6,500 copies all the way down at uh, rank 250. A um, couple of issues of Dollface at 311 and 317 from Action Lab. Uh, one of my favorite comics, and it's selling uh, 4,000 copies each. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the Aftershock catalog, uh, we've got Unholy Grail, the Brian Wood, no, Colin Bunn. Colin Bunn series that launched, uh, it's number one issue is sold 13,000 copies down at rank 156. Baby Teeth uh, dropped a little bit from its first issue to the rank 180 with uh, 10,742. Question for you, brother. Yeah. At rank 128, we see reorder information for Batman 24, the reorder of the engagement issue. Is that second print and third print rolled into one skew? Uh, did, I don't know. Did they come out the same month? I think they did. Let me do a quick... You, you talk and let me do a little research. Because one was the, the, the cover... One was with, the off-collar, and then the third print was the sketch that everybody was like, oh, I, yeah. I must have. 
Yeah, I was kind of excited about the sketch, although I don't think it's got any heat on it. Yeah, they uh, apparently, I believe, both came out in that month, so I think that's both of them rolled up into one. Just general curiosity on that one. Yeah, not a lot of, not a lot of copies. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, Jimmy's Bastards. Uh, oh yeah, uh, it's it's second issue. Uh, that went to second print, if I remember correctly. Down to did sixty four hundred copies at rank two fifty five. That first issue was really good. Um, and uh, that's, of course, Garth Ennis, who will be at the Cowabunga World's Smallest Comic Con. Ah. Doing a signing up there on October 28th, along with uh, your good pal Drew here. Um, I will not be doing a signing, but I'll probably... <laughs> going to say, oh, man. I'll probably sign something if somebody asks me to, but uh, <laughs> I don't think I don't think I'm going to have a table. But... Drew is taking the headshots. <laughs> I'll be like, scoot over, Garth. Make some room. <laughs> Podcast superstar here. I don't think that would go over very well. Yeah. Uh, from Black Mask, our buddy's Black Mask, we've got that Cal Exit that I liked. Um, 8,700 copies. Uh, the first issue did really well. Last Song, which I thought was amazing um, from them. The first issue did 3,500. Um, it's going to be... It, it was like 50 pages or something like that. It was oversized. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like a quarterly deal. It's going to come out every three months. So um, I don't look for it to sell 3500 for issue two. Um, I hope people remember it. It was really good. Um, there's nothing there. Uh, it's third issue. Sold 2759 So uh, when... Beautiful Canvas, I'm not familiar with that one. I don't know if I read that first issue or not. Did you read Beautiful Canvas number one from Black Mask? I did not read that one. Hmm, I don't remember what that is even, so it's it's escaping me. Did you uh, talk about Redneck number three? No. Redneck number three, up to 22,000, up 10% from issue two, so it looks like... Uh, it will hold true that issue two will be the low, by far low, uh, print run for that at the moment. Because uh, there's le there's 2,000 less issues of number two. Nice. We've got Black Hammer. Uh, the 11th issue did 11,500. Um, solid, solid comic. Down at rank 172. Uh, Dynamite's big release was Betty Page, the first mm. issue with all those covers. Uh, did 21,299 at rank 106. Uh, did you pick up a couple of those? I did not. It might have been Eric that was talking about those. I think he was going to pick some up. Should we talk about Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number 20? You can. It gets me in trouble. <laughs> At rank 240, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, 7,731 copies. Uh, it's saying it's down 45% from 19. It went up a little bit for 19 for the cover. And then uh, back down to under 8,000. The first issue of Centipede, which had an Atari 2600 cover, which I had to get mm -hmm. uh ranked 259 uh sold 6237 copies and i think that was written by my good buddy max bemis ah yeah
Uh, eh, that's about all I can suss out. Was there? Was Time and Vine in July? It must have been in June. The first issue, because I'm not seeing it from my DW. Mm-mm. No. Uh, shirtless Bear Fighter, the second issue. Oops, shoot. It oh. dropped to 14,000, uh, rank 143. Good stuff there. I think the uh, last thing I read was actually from June's numbers, not July. Sorry, I didn't switch back over. Uh, Snot Girl, number six. Uh, it's back from its trade trade break. And did 12,700 copies there. Rank uh, 158. Glad to have it back. Invincible's winding down. Uh, at rank 170 with uh, 11,500 copies sold. Uh, Crosswind. The Gail Simone Freaky Friday mobster housewife thing. Mm-hmm. Uh... 10,200 copies of its uh, second issue at rank 185. And then uh, Bitch Planet, triple feature. Oh, the, the triple feature, yeah. Triple feature, which uh, I'm really liking a lot. It sold 10,000 copies and uh, rank 190. That's its second issue. Let's see. Plastic's been really good. It's uh, sold 8,700 copies at rank 209. The uh, Beauty. Uh, it's 16th issue. Sold 5,000 copies at rank 286. Continues to impress me. Each and every mm-hmm. story arc. Uh, yeah, those uh, those Moon Girl numbers, I actually read you June's instead of July. So July, it stayed around 7,000 and just lost a little bit more, but did not uptick. Okay. Were all those other numbers that you were talking about wrong, too? No, I think it was just <laughs> that one that I was on at that point. I was jumping back and forth to try to find your other book. I, so it's my fault. Is that what no, you're no, 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 no. I'm just telling you why I was, why I was in June. Don't blame me. Don't I would never blame, do such a thing. Don't you blame me. How? dare you <laughs> uh our good folks the good folks at valiant uh they had the fifth issue of exo man of war did thirteen thousand, so that's good mm-hmm. that's good to get that's maintaining uh, sales there at the fifth issue level that's really good secret weapons number one sold almost eleven thousand copies um, Harbinger Renegade number five is at eight thousand. Secret Weapons two at eight thousand, so it dropped pretty quickly, but it's only twenty percent or so. Uh, a couple of other first issues at Faith in the Fur- Future Force, Faith in the Future Force, Bloodshot Stay Off. Uh, those are both did around seventy five hundred copies. Uh, Britannic, Britannia 4 and Rapture 3 did 7,000. Man, the Valiant's just, I don't know who they are anymore. You know? <laughs> uh, I, when, even when I wasn't reading them before, at least they were consistently, uh, you know, Archer and Armstrong, Cronin mm-hmm. and Woody, Exo. Um, who's the other one that was just Bloodshot was always that you know, and they don't seem to have any just regular titles anymore. Uh, I guess just the XO. Everything else is just like new series or weird series that aren't really their bread <laughs> and butter. Yeah. Um, and maybe the bread and butter wasn't selling enough, and that's why they're doing this. But still. I can I can see a reboot in their future pretty easy uh, to get back to kind of those other titles again. True, we have one of your Alterna comics on this list. Oh yeah, yep. At rank three hundred and ninety-two, uh, Scrimshaw number one at two thousand five hundred eighty-four sales. 
Good deal. Um, did we did we do the breakdown of sh- who won the week? Who won the month? No, I have not. Eh, Marvel won again. <laughs> <laughs> Drum roll, please. Yeah, they won forty three percent unit sales. DC had. 35% unit sales and image did almost 9%. No one else had over 3. Hmm. Sad. Um Marvel put 91 copy comics out in the top 300. DC did 74, Image did 39, IDW 22. Oh. Anything else from that? Mm-mm. I'll do it. All right, Drew, any feedback or anything? Or you want to get into what's coming out this week? Let's just go straight to it. All right, let's head on over to previewsworld.com. We're going to be looking at August 23rd, 2017. We've still got one more week left in August after this one, so it's not quite the end. I will click table view, and then Drew, let's start where we always love to start. Let's start in Dark Horse. Well, we just talked about the 11,500 comics sold of uh, Black Hammer 11, so mm-hmm. now see if we can do a little better with Black Hammer 12 because it's awesome. And I think but what is a- not awesome is that uh, Jeff Lemire cover B. You don't like it. That is horrid. That's that's Lemire goodness, though. That's kind of his murky style sometimes. I know there's a murky style to that, but this is, that's, that's, that's yeah. to the... Yeah, and it looks kind of like Matt Kent too. It's got mm-hmm. a it's got a Matt Kent look to it. Um, the uh, I think this is going to be taking a little break because they're doing like a series of mini series exploring some of the other characters within Black Hammer and their origins, and they'll be doing those little as little mini mini series or one shots or something. And this book might not come out regularly for a while while they do that. Shout out to Matt Kent. Like, seriously, De- Department H or Depth, however you want to say it, is yeah. on issue 17. He's writing this. He's doing the art on it. It's coming out consistently. I read it through eight issues and really liked it, but didn't think it was going to be a long series. He's he's churning it. And looking at this cover, I want to know how the hell we got here. So I'm very, very tempted to jump back in and catch You're up. You're jumping back on. I think so. I'm just impressed that in a world where creators can't get books out on time he's churning out these writing and doing the art consistently like they i don't think they've missed he's on 17 it wasn't that long ago this was on one well um yeah what the heck is going on now while our ragtag team of survivors struggles six miles below the ocean the world has its own unique set of problems the surface has its own secrets and those secrets are threatening to doom our deep sea team. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, is it still? It's not still on a mystery about who it, got it killed, was just is a, it? Who killed Dad? Why is there a giant squid? Let's move on. <laughs> and now we've gone somewhere else. That we, we've we've hung a left, Drew. I did not see this left coming. Huh. Neat. All right, Drew. Anything else in Dark Horse? Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Let's head on down to DC books. We've got uh, Batgirl, number 14, with uh, my boy Dan Mora doing the cover. Summer of Lies, part one. Batgirl and Nightwing's feelings for each other have always run deep. Oh, see, yeah. There you go. But is their blood, is their bond built on more than Bat family loyalty and a long ago childhood crush? When an old villain comes back into Bab's life, she and Dick will have to reopen painful wounds and remember a time they'd hope would remain forgotten. This is an event no Batgirl or Nightwing fan will want to miss. Kyle, the last time Nightwing and Batgirl crossed over in an issue with a four in it, what happened? (laughs) That book was very short. Uh, owned in a, a, it did not go back for a second print, and it shot up to thirty bucks. Yeah, so uh, could be uh, sought after by both sides. Absolutely, and uh, they didn't maybe didn't realize it, and it could be in short supply. 
Who knows? Yeah, but I that, like my I like my Nightwing and my Batgirl together. So uh, let, let's do this. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm sampling this. I'm gonna jump back on and see how this is. Dan Moore cover doesn't hurt. No, uh, he's pretty awesome, and uh, so I'm I'm psyched about that. DC is slowly accumulating these artists. You know, we we heard about the Joel Jones signing. Still haven't seen what she's doing yet. Oh, you didn't you didn't look at your uh, solicit running or your your solicit or your book? What's she doing? Uh, I know she's doing a cover B on a on something. Oh yeah, yeah, but but oh, okay. I'm assuming it's more than that. Yeah, 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 but I, she's starting is all I'm saying. It's, it's yeah, nice yeah. to see. That yeah, I saw the yeah I saw the cover. Um, and then she's got uh. Or or Dan Moore is doing stuff now. We've got a lot of you know Tom King's cranking things out. I kind of like the talent they're accumulating over here. Yeah, true story. If we can get them on the right books. Uh, that'd be the right thing to do. Uh, Drew, click on Blue Beetle variant. Uh, good old Tyler Kirkman. That is a, a wicked looking. I love that cover. I love that cover. Kirkham. Tyler Kirkham. Yeah. Got not, Kirkman on the brain. Not Kirkman. Yeah, I don't know who's reading this book, but that's a pretty cover. I do I do a lot of cover hunting in DC anymore. Yeah. Well, it's nice because they make it easy. They make it easy because it's three bucks, and they make it easy because you don't have to jump through hoops to get them. They're not one in tens. Um, so I, I like it too. Mm-hmm. Drew, I love my Nightwing. Yes, you do. And I love New 52, Kyle Higgins' Nightwing. Yes. Well, by golly, I have Nightwing, the New Order number one, written by Kyle Higgins with art by Trevor McCarthy. Ugh. Nightwing, Ugh. the New Order, is the story of a future world without, quote-unquote, weapons, where superpowers have been eliminated and outlawed. The man responsible? None other than Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Nightwing, now leader of a government task force called the Crusaders who are charged with hunting the remaining supers. But when events transpire which turn the Crusaders aimed towards Grayson's own family, the former Boy Wonder must turn against the very system he helped create and help from the very people he's been hunting for years, the last meta-humans of the DC Universe. Don't miss this bold new vision from the team behind New York Times bestseller, Batman Gates of Gotham. I'm in. I got Blue Suit Nightwing. I got Kyle Higgins. I got more Nightwing. Give it to me. Uh, don't go sleeping on that um, Harley Quinn cover B. Ooh, Cho. That's a Frank Cho cover. It's a pretty one. That is a cool one. I like it. Anything going on in these books? We've got uh, Keith Giffen and Steve Rude taking a turn at the Commandy Challenge, which has been kind of fun off and on depending on you who's think doing. it'd be so uneven though it's just tough. oh it's totally uneven it is totally uneven uh marguerite bennett kind of struggled with hers oh yeah yeah <laughs> but then that bill willingham crushed it knocked it out of the park so you just never know it depends some people really take to it and do really well and some people don't All right, Drew, anything else in D.C.? Uh, I don't think so. Is this ti Teen Titans uh, the metal tie-in? Or is it the next one? I, or that's I just Titans? it's the next one. Yeah, is it just Titans? No, there's Teen Titans at the bottom. Uh, yeah, I think it's just Titans that is the, the, the Batman metal Because I think that's the... I think between the issue one and two of metal... Is a Titans book. I believe you are correct, sir. So it must be the next. It must be just Titans. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, you we we can go. We can move. All on. right, Drew. Let's head on to IDW. Nothing. Nope. Don, no Donald and Mickey. No. Uh, no. Nope. Gem and the holograms. No. no Rom. Nope. Drew. Let's see what Image has for us. Uh, Hard place number one. Is that Brian Stelfreeze? Mm, 
cover by Brian Stelfreeze, writing by Doug Wagner, and internal covers by or internal art by Nick Rummel and Charlie Kirkhoff. After five years in prison, A.J. Gurney, a legendary wheelman in Detroit, has decided it's time to go straight. He returns home to work in his father's garage and disappears into anonymity. But during a visit to the bank, A.J. is recognized by two violent violent bank robbers, and they demand A.J. be their getaway driver. To ensure his compliance, they take a young female hostage. Unfortunately, she happens to be the daughter of a Russian crime lawyer. A.J. now finds himself pursued by a bitter police department and hunted by every asset of the Russian mob. Without a doubt, he's in a very hard place. It seems like these wheelmen are very, very easy to uh, pull back into the fray. It seems they're <laughs> always trying to get out, and by golly, they just can't do it. It's the baby driver, huh? It's the baby driver, it's the drive, it's the transporter. Yeah, yeah that's true. It's just literally... Don't be a wheelman. Insert, insert wheelman, wheel man, pull him back out, pull him back in. <laughs> Was Plastic always a five-issue series? Uh, no. Okay. No, of course. It was... It was not solicited as well one of five, um, but once once they get you, then they're like, eh, let's just do a five issue miniseries. We knew it all along, but we didn't tell you. Ethics, but image, this ethics. is ethics. We put a lot of trust in you. Uh, the least you could do is be honest. It's been uh, it's been kind of fun. It feels uh, a little bit like nail biter, um, so I kind of like it, and looking forward to seeing how it ends. Now, Generation Gone is at a second printing. Yeah. Um, is that the same as the... Yes, it looks... No, wait. No, it's a different cover, but it's the cover's really cover. lame. Yeah, yeah, nothing too special, um, but it is a different cover, so... But it may you wouldn't pay $5 for the first issue. I don't think you're paying it for the second Oh, printing. it's a $5 book. Yeah, moving on. Yeah. Um, so we've got a Hickman cover for its second issue, cover B. Um, nothing spectacular, so I'm sticking with cover A on that one. But it's it was really good. Mm -hmm. That's a wicked look at Redneck. I dropped that book. Is it still good? No clue. You're not reading it? Mm -mm. Do we have a nude shirtless bear fighters, or are they just regular shirtless bear fighters? Uh, I don't know. I think they're just regular. Right. I think that was just a, kind of a one-time thing, wasn't it? Uh, there was at least two or three. Because I know we had a regular shirtless bear fighter, and then we had a, a child naked shirtless bear fighter. And then we had the Burt Reynolds shirtless bear fighter. I missed that. And I was under the impression that the Burt Reynolds shirtless bear fighter was, I thought, three, but maybe, who knows? It may be, oh, I think it's it's an incentive, so it's probably on the incentives page more than this. Oh, uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, that if it's that Burt Reynolds one, that looks pretty cool. Uh, wow. No. Uh, that's it. All right, let's move on down to Marvel. Uh, that's a really cool cover for that Dare Daredevil 25. I really like it. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good. I think that's Ron Garney doing that. It's a nice looking cover. Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe again. They're always good covers on all those. Those are always pretty cool. Do we think anything will happen in this generation's Unworthy Thor and Mighty Thor? Well, you're killing her, so I don't know if... Have we ever been told... Are we killing her? No, there's or no we way. Just assume, we all just assume it's her that's going to die. I, I, I have made a... I, I'm a couple issues behind in Thor's, and I haven't grabbed the other... Th have we found out what was ever whispered in his friggin' ear through all these things? Yeah, that was... We found out in... Uh, mm, what was that? That was the end of Unworthy, right? Was it? No, I think we. Is that yeah, yeah? The last issue of Unworthy we okay. found out. Okay, I I I, stopped, I didn't finish that series. All right, because yeah. that's the only thing I really cared about. So I'll I'll find that information and then move move on. So yeah, nothing else. I don't think it will happen in this. 
we got the third issue of Peter Parker. This is kind of make or break for me. Liked one, didn't like two. We'll see what three is like. Hmm. Be the tiebreaker. And then we've got the ninth issue. Should have been final issue of Secret Empire, but we're going to hit a bonus tenth. And then uh, an Omega issue. So I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it's winding down. We're turning the corner. Mm-hmm. Good guys are winning. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, the the Star Wars Dr. Afra annual is uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Got a little Wookiee action on the cover. Did it all for the Wookiee. That's a cool cover on Weapon X 7. The Hunt for Weapon H Part 1. So, I don't know if people become uh, enthralled by this Weapon H character. Um, it looks like a large chunk of that storyline is here. So, that might be something to look into for Weapon X. Weapon H, a terrifying combination of the Hulk and Wolverine's DNA, is the deadliest experiment to ever come out of the Weapon X program. And, they're officially, and they've officially lost control of him. Old Man Logan, Sabretooth, and Lady Deathstrike, Warpath, and Domino race to find Weapon H, but what happens if he loses control before they can find him? What happens? What will happen? I bet somebody will use claws. Yeah. So you got Greg Smallwood for a cover B. Oh, you're, we're not done with Mar Marvel yet. I'm sorry. No, it's all gravy. No. Are you done with Marvel? Um, we talked about Secret Empire 9 of 9, or 9 of 10? Yeah. Okay, then we're gravy. Okay, Archie. You get Greg's, the great Greg Smallwood to do a cover B. True story. And you, is it his choice to just do a question mark? <laughs> and not okay, really we're... do any art, or just have a little glimpse of his art through, like, a keyhole type of thing? Um... I'd be like, hey, Greg, you're really good. Go back. Do, do a, Give us a little more. It's give almost us, it's almost all black. Give the us cover. more than 12% uh, of a cover. Yeah. It's, you're Greg freaking Smallwood. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got a new story arc in that book. The fallout continues. One life has been destroyed. Another family has been torn apart. And only the kids of Riverdale High can save their town from imploding. I'm current on that, and that doesn't even sound vaguely familiar to me. What's going the, on? Well, we had the uh, the hospital. You saw the hospital scenes. Maybe I'm not current. Maybe okay. I'm not current. It doesn't there, sound familiar there, either. There's something that happened in a hospital that now we're dealing with. Okay. Betty Page two. Yeah, I saw that photo cover. She was a good-looking woman. Mm -hmm. Got doll face eight. Let's go cranking them out. Heathen number five. Did you drop off of that hook? I I only read the first one. Okay, I didn't read it. I haven't been reading it lately, so. Um, got High Five Fight Club number one, written by Carly Usden, with art by Irene Flores, and a an, uh, cover by Nina Vacueva. Um, she's a film and TV director, the new writer is. Um, but the, the thing that she wrote for TV was RuPaul's Drag Race. So, oh. there you go. Um, but she's. Um, this is a series that's music to our ears. It's in New Jersey, 1998. Chris has just started the teen dream job working at Vinyl Music, Vinyl Mayhem, the local record store. Uh, she's prepared to deal with anything misogynistic, with anything misogynistic metalheads, grunge wannabes, even a crush on her w wicked cute coworker, Maggie. But when Rory Gory, the staff's favorite singer, mysterious. 
mysteriously vanishes the night before her band show in t- before her band's show in town. Chris finds out her co-workers are doing more than just sorting vinyl. Her local indie record store is also a front for a teen girl vigilante fight club. Okay. uh, The reason I'm struggling with this is because in 1998, I was a record store manager. This is true. So uh, vinyl was not a thing. You know, <laughs> nobody cared about vinyl. You were slinging casingles, if I remember. <laughs> we were shocked. CDs were were kicking it. We there, MP3 was on the horizon. Uh, it was all CDs and cassettes a little bit. Um, there was a few, maybe some DJs were doing some stuff with vinyl, but nobody else wanted it. And this was in a college town. Um, we we have pre hipsters that were there. Um, there there was no vinyl, no vinyl. So this this should not have been a vinyl shop. Um, <laughs> we're calling shenanigans. <laughs> not in ninety eight. Not in ninety eight. I just it doesn't make sense. Um, whatever. Right. I'm totally thrown out of. It. I don't think I want to read it. Now. American Mythology Productions presents the land that time forgot from Earth's core number one. That is the longest solicit I have ever seen, written by Mike <laughs> Wolfer, uh, with Gene Magora on art. Um, American Mythology Productions means we're probably not going to be able to find these anyways. Letter 4435. The end is here. The final installment that will bring the award-winning series to a close. Sniff, sniff. And now there will be no decent... Charles Letter Starbucks. 45. <laughs> That'll be the end. Robotech with a second print uh, of our uh, art germ cover looks about the exact same. No, she's winking. I, she didn't wink on the other one? No. Wait, I'm, seriously? I want that then. Yeah, that's the that no seriously, I, I'm serious. The only difference I think is that she's winking on this one. I'm literally walking over to grab my regular copy because I'm curious. You're right. She's not. I want that. Really? I you, do. You, you want it because she's winking. I I I, I yeah. In the the dude in the background is is uh, sketch. Um yeah, but the only difference is she's winking. And that's kind of that's kind of cool. It, th- not really. And in that's the third cool. print, her, her eyes will be closed. That's <laughs> give me. Yeah, I'm in. I, you're, I'm gonna, you're seriously I'm gonna in. Have, I'm seriously. I, I'd like to get a hold of that. That's kind of neat. You see some stupid stuff with second prints, but I think that's a cool that, subtlety. That to me is akin to uh, changing it to, for, to red. No, you have to redraw eyes. You've oh made a come on! It's a layer. Here. It's a Photoshop layer. It's nothing. How dare you mar- marginalize art germ? <laughs> he's probably got. Maybe he's like doing it old school. A big art board up there. I must now draw another one with her winking. What is this? I just, I think that's neat. That like so when you go to look this book up in ten years, it's going to say second print. She's winking, first print, both eyes open. I think that's neat. I'd like both of those. Well, yeah, we'll have to check with our good friends at Calabunga and see if they uh, can put one back for you. Pull a few strings for me. In fact, that that's looking like my pick of the week right there. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm calling it. Wow. I, I, I rolled my eyes. I rolled my eyes. Did you only roll one eye and the other was wait, wait, blinking? Wait, That's like, how it should have been. It was on, um, I think it was on FOC last week. Was it? Oh, man. And uh, Or the week before. And I was like, oh, the only difference is it's a wink. That's dumb. And I moved on. And you, it's captured your imagination. It, it, it has. That's really, that's, that's different strokes. Um, mm-hmm. From Valiant, we have... War Mother number one, written by Fred Van Lenty, with art by Steven Segovia, and a cover by David Mack. The great David Mack. Um, you wouldn't like the cover, though. Ah. 
Because you demanded it, War Mother returns in a riveting new series out of the pages of 4001 AD. The breakout hero of 41st century charges onward in a high-powered tale of tomorrow. Eh. I don't think I care that much. <laughs> I don't see anything else worth talking about. Mm-mm. Nope. All right, Drew, if that's all you got for me, uh, I'm going to ask you, what is your one book worth running to your local comic book shop, snagging up, and uh, hopefully making a little bit of money off of, Drew? What you got for me? Well, I'm thinking that Robotech. No. <laughs> you son of a... <laughs> oh, no. Um, shoot. I guess a uh, hard place is my probably de facto one. I think that's got something, and I'm gonna have to go cover A. Cause Kyle says go cover A. This is so true. Hard, hard place number one. By who? So what's who's that? That's the Stelfreeze. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 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 He got a lot of time now since Black Panther is probably gone. <laughs> and I'm going Robotech second, Brett. Uh, I, I think that's a neat little gimmick, and um, I don't see anything else that I'm super in love with that will blow me off of that, so yeah, let's go with that this week. Uh, being five weeks, you get a few thin things in, in these weeks. There's some neat things, some good reads. Yeah. Um, definitely worth going to your LCS and see what's there, but yeah, that's mine. That's yeah. my, my choice. My uh, option B is Batgirl 14. Cover A or cover B? Cover A. Cover A. There you go. I, I concur that that is a good thing to do. There's another one that I was looking at that I was like, eh. And if you can find Shirtless Bear Fighter uh, uh, Burt Reynolds, uh, you're going to want to do that one. You're going to want to get that one. You're going to want to. You're going to. You're going to be happy with that one. Have you read? Have you read that yet? No, I haven't. Oh. I hear it's actually really funny. It's funny, but it's dumb. That's that's right up my alley. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, shirtless bear fighter. I'm, I'm looking through the variants just to see if it's if I if, if I've got the right week on. I missed it. Where's image? I had it. Shirt layer. Oh, jeez. Hmm. Fifteen copy. Yeah, the fifteen copy incentive for shirtless bear fighter three is the uh, Burt Reynolds layout, <laughs> and I think that's pretty cool. That is kind of cool. That's funny. That is funny. All right. If there's nothing else, Drew, we want to thank everybody for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. Uh, if you think I'm crazy about the Robotech second print, drop us a line on our Facebook page or uh, Twitter at Comics Fun Profit or uh, send us an email on our Gmail account. Um, if we missed something during this week and you're like, man, you guys talked about these things, but this was the book to go get. This is the next um, Totally Awesome Hulk 22. Uh, feel free to, you know, send us a line, let us know. Uh, it's good to be back. It's good to get back into what's happening in comics and next week we will be finishing out the month of august so for drew and for myself see ya okay